Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of kind of hidden features inside of TextMesh Pro, which have to do with basically the custom font asset, the material, and the font atlas, kind of the management of that. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, or these hidden features. To access them, it's pretty simple. Select your TextMesh Pro object. Um, get to the material and as you right click to bring up the context menu you're gonna see that there are a bunch of options the select shader edit shader and reset are basically the default um, functions that unity adds the remaining five which is duplicate material copy material properties paste material properties copy atlas paste atlas are added by text mesh pro so let's take a look at those um, let's say um, you have an object that's using a certain font. In this case, it's using the uh, Bow OS 93, whatever font. And what if I needed to have two objects? Let's duplicate one object and have a second one. And we wanted these two objects to be distinct in terms of their look. We still wanted to use the same font, but we would like a, a different treatment, like a different texture, different outline, and so on and so forth. Now. You might think that one way to go would be to pick the custom font asset and duplicate this asset. Um, that would work, um, but the problem in doing this is you would end up with not only a duplicate of the material, which is kind of what you want, but you would duplicate the entire asset. So you'd get two atlases uh, for this um, let's say font, you would get two material, you would duplicate the entire kerning table for both, the glyph data and all that, which basically means you're duplicating a bunch of stuff which is not efficient. Because in the end, all you want is a different material that's actually using the same atlas, or at least referencing the same atlas, as well as the same, uh, I guess, font definition. So how do you do that? That's where these new options come from. So let's pick the top object here. And in this case, all we want is a duplicate material that's using the same font. So all I would do is right click to bring up the menu, click duplicate material. As I do that, you can see that now a new material has shown up. It was automatically assigned to this object. And now if I was to change something, let's uh, add some thickness like this. Uh, let's uh, add a texture, for example. Uh, I won't go too far, but I'll just pick like some brush metal texture. As you can see, we now have two uh, objects using the same font, but two distinct treatments of it. Okay, and that's how du duplicate material works. Um, now, what if, for example, you wanted to um, uh, let's take a look at a different font, for example. Let's uh, go to the Technique U font, which is this one here. And you'll see that I have like uh, additional materials that I made. So let's drag this one here and put it right there. So as you can see here, this material looks like really cool, right? Because it's very different. It's got this green glow and, and all that stuff on it. But what if I wanted kind of this treatment, but to this original font that we were using? Well, the way to do that would be to select this guy, uh, which is actually the green here, the material. I would say copy the material properties, and then we go back to this object. Let's assign the font that we want to use, which was actually this uh, Bauer whatever thing. Um, we wanted the one, well, we'll actually create a copy right here. We'll duplicate the material, so now we have three of them, but on this last one that we created, we'll paste the green whatever properties that we had, which is right there. So when what's the difference between duplicate, copy, and paste? Well, remember, each font has their own distinct atlas. So copy properties copies all the settings of the shaders, including the keywords, but it leaves intact the atlas that's being used. So that way you can copy shader settings and properties or material properties from one object, but we ignore the font atlas and then we drop those in into another atlas. And that's basically what they do. Now the copy atlas and paste atlas allow you to basically paste the atlas back and forth. So why would that be important and when would you use that? Well, the place to use it is, um, Let's say I have this technique font and I go to my uh, font creator tool and I create a new version. Well, when you do that, you could end up overriding all the other ones and it has happened where the material reference can get lost. Um, right now, it's kind of harder to do that, but 
um, because you guys are testing and so on and so forth. This debug panel allows you to go in here and change the font atlas that's being used. And if you do that, if I assign none, let me make sure I'm using the gray one. But if I assign it to none, I've now broken this material. Now, why is it broken? Well, if I drag it here, um, you'll see why well, we get an error because uh, I wasn't using that one. Let me go back to picking uh, this technique U, which reset it. Let's take the gray and put it there. Now, we get the error. Although we're using the same one, we have no atlas assigned to this one. Now, why can't we pick the atlas? Well, it's simple. When we generate this font, the atlas that's being used is a sub-asset of this custom font asset. So there's, it doesn't exist as a separate file. So the only way to get to it is by using this function. Now, this seems kind of complex and why are we doing it this way? Well, if you look at any TTF font when you import them in Unity, like a stencil, for example, you can see that they have sub-assets embedded in them like this font material and this font texture, and you can't get to those either. They're visible, and this is the structure I wanted with Text Mesh Pro, but there's a bug that was preventing me from getting this cool little collapsible thing. But in the end, it's the same structure, except you don't see the collapsible thing. If there was the little arrow, you would see this material and basically this atlas show up. But because you can't pick them, they're hidden in there, I had to add this extra feature, and I'm saying a lot of stuff to get to a simple feature, but how do you fix this guy? We pick the material that's used by the default one, which is this guy. I basically say copy the atlas, pick the one or all of the ones. I can select a bunch of them and paste it back in. And that, as you can see, fixes it for the broken reference. So hopefully this made sense. Um, so just to quickly recap, what we looked at is the context menu that Text Mesh Pro adds that allows you to duplicate the material, copy properties, paste those properties, and copy atlas and paste atlas. And that's mostly to fix if you ever break one of those references. Uh, these were just recently added. Um, it, it can happen that you'll break a reference because you're creating a font over another font and that's where you would use these things. Uh, a quick side note. Um, this debug menu is going to go away, most likely, because then people could really break stuff. But when you uh, create an SDF font, in order for us to render correctly, not only do we need the correct atlas, but we need the correct gradient scale. And it would be possible for you to, um, let's say, redo a tech like this font, for example, but use a different spread or different padding. And if you did that, although you would copy all the material uh, atlases uh, back into it, if their individual uh, gradient scale is different, then they'll still look weird. So always make sure if you paste back these atlases that whatever you paste it back in, that everybody is using the same gradient scale. Otherwise, it will uh, still be kind of funky and not doing exactly what you want. So hopefully this these videos made sense. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those on the forum. Uh, as usual, thank you for watching.